Dan, yeah, how it? Um, it's it's been over the past couple of days. I would say the past three or four days, it's been kind of a, a process. You know, it's not something that happens instantly. Um, for obvious reasons, it's, it's it's a hard decision to make. But um, it, it's been three or four days of you know a lot of thinking, you know, a lot of talking to people in the program and, and family members about it. So it's it's been it's been a few days. Of it. Is one thing that pushed you at this point in terms um, of this decision to, to play? No, there's there's not one thing. Um, there's there's many things. Um, you know, I would say the one thing they all had in common were just you know physical things. Um, dealing dealing with my body and you know something I've I've dealt with you know, pretty much my whole career is injuries and um, kind of fighting through that stuff. And um, so I would say you know just just phys for physical reasons um, is, is the main reason that it kind of forced me to start thinking. About is it the knee that was the final start? Did you come back from that how you wanted to, or is it just everything? Um, there's a lot of things. Um, you know, obviously my, my knee's been an issue um, since I heard it last last season against Illinois. Um, but there's you know there's a couple other things going on. Um, won't get into any specifics about, about that stuff. decision how tough is it to tell coach Chris and the rest of your teammates yeah it's it's hard um you know this this program's really been a big part of my life you know for going on five years now um something I deeply care about and you know you earn the respect of your teammates because of how hard you work and, and the time you put in here so um so telling them that you know we're no longer be playing anymore it was difficult for me um but what made that easy is, um, you know, I made it clear that I was I'm going to remain a big part of the program. Um, my role is just going to shift from playing to helping out in other ways, um, kind of what I did in the spring. Um, so that that made the transition a lot easier for me. Just you know, letting especially letting the O line know that you know I'm not going to kind of fade away from that group. I'm going to be a big part of what they do. Um, I'm going to be around them as much as I can and. Um, they, I think they really respected that, and I made sure that that was um, kind of my main point to them. So. How much do you think you can help this, this group, this offensive line group and the young guys? Yeah, I feel like I have a lot to offer. Um, you know, the, the way football is played nowadays and the, what defenses are running, it's such men, the mental side of it is, is such a big part. And just having an extra set of eyes at practice, at games, um, you know, I feel is a huge asset to the group. and. Um, you know, I, I've started quite a few games, so I feel like I, I have a lot to offer experience-wise, and um, you know, I, I feel like I can continue to help these guys grow and, and, and just teach them kind of you know what I know and what I've experienced, and and just kind of continue that path. So. What's, your, what's probably the most important lesson or message you can give them, especially a guy like Dieter, who filled in for you last year down the stretch, but now is going to be the most experienced player on that unit? Yeah, um, you know, I think. For, for Dieter, um, kind of leadership is, is the main thing that comes to mind. You know, um, he's, you know, kind of taken over, obviously taken over the center role and he's kind of growing into, you know, one of the most experienced guys, one of our best players. And, you know, kind of that next step is to be that leader, be the guy, um, that consistent player, guys who, um, you know, can rally around him and, and, and be vocal and stuff like that. So for him, that's kind of the next step that I, you know, see him taking. Um, something that, you know, I was planning on doing this year, kind of being a leader of that group. But um, while I still plan on being a leader of this team, I'm not going to be out there during practice, during games. So somebody's got to step up and become that vocal leader. And, um, you know, I think he could definitely do that. Did you have an idea this might happen when you, when you said, hey, move Michael to center? Did you have an idea maybe this in the back of your head that you maybe call it at that point or not? Um, not really, no. Um, you know, I had obviously at that point kind of overcame my, my knee injury and um, I kind of made the decision from that point on that I was going to, you know, train all summer and give it everything I had and, and come out and start in fall camp and then just see how everything felt. Um, so my, my mindset all summer was that I was going to play and um, the season was going to kind of go as planned and you know, unfortunately, that wasn't the situation, and that is, this is how I've kind of reacted to it. But my mentality throughout um, this whole offseason has been that I, would, you know, would play this this year. Um. Yeah. I mean, you know, anytime, 
anytime you kind of deal with an injury, you know, even a small injury, um, you're going to lose a little bit of confidence. And, and the key to that is is being able to get the confidence back. Um, you know, and that's that's a big part of the rehab process for any injury is getting back on the field and feeling comfortable playing football, knowing that you know in the past that you hurt yourself. Um, so that that's something that you know I, I've dealt with. Um, you know, having having a couple major injuries, um, kind of the mental side of it's a big part of it too. Is playing football while having those thoughts in your head is not a good thing. Uh, it's such a physical game, and, and when you're not there mentally. Um, you're really putting yourself in a bad position to, to get hurt again, and you're putting your teammates in a bad position also. So, yeah, I would say. So you've got, you're working on your master's now, correct? Yeah. How close are you? How far away? Um, I have three more semesters, so, I, you know, I'm going to be be here for another year and a half, which I'm very happy about. <laughs> um, but, you know, continue my education and, and continue to be a part of this program for you know, the next two seasons is something that's super exciting to me. How much of, I'm just curious if, if there was a factor at all in your decision was when you read more stories about guys who are later in life who play football, who always talk about, I just want to be able to play with my kids, walk, you know, did, did that factor into it at all? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, that's something not many football, college football players probably think about, which is a good thing. Um, but when you are at the point when you start thinking about life after football, yep. your long-term health, that's when you really have to kind of take a step back and say, is this the best decision for my body? And, and you know, it's, it's a selfish decision, but rightfully so, you know, you have to make the best decision for yourself in the end, especially when it comes to your physical health, because that's something that sticks with you for the rest of your life. So that's definitely something that I thought about a lot making this decision is, you know, I'm 22 years old and I have a lot of life to live. And, Look forward to just just being healthy and having a productive life after football. Did you turn to anyone in particular for, to use that as a sounding board to get advice through this process? Um, various people throughout the program. I won't name anybody specifically, but there's I've talked to many people, you know, players, coaches alike, that have given me great great perspective on, on this whole situation, and I'm really thankful for that.